Hi, my name is Mark Rents. I'm a member of the design team at Trueball, and today I'd like to introduce to you the new GOAT release, which is a real wild signature release. It is a release that will shoot both hinge and trigger in just three easy steps. It's anodized aluminum on one side, and it is nickel plated brass on the other. It will come with our articulating finger pieces, three finger and four finger, so you'll have a three finger and a four finger and it'll be available in large and medium to start out with. Today, I'd like to go over the adjustments of how to go from a button to a hinge and then back again. Uh, it will come to you in the package as a trigger or button release. So let's start off by showing you how to adjust the trigger for the tension and the travel. And if you're familiar with our blade releases, you'll notice that the adjustments are identical to that, but we're gonna go over it anyhow. First of all, I'd like to show you that there is a lock screw here and a lock screw here. This one locks the travel adjustment. This one locks the sensitivity. You don't have to really mess with those. They just want to always have tension on them. So you don't have to loosen them up and then retighten them when you make an adjustment. Just occasionally tighten them a little bit especially if you've adjusted it a lot, to make sure that there is tension on it. If you loosen them up and retighten them, sometimes because there's a Delrin ball there that is engaging on a thread, it could slightly move your adjustment. So you might not be getting the adjustment that you really want. So we're gonna start out with the trigger travel. And you cock it, just like any other release, and you take a 50 thousandths Allen wrench and you turn it clockwise or in until it cocks and then back it off a quarter of a turn. And we're gonna cock it again and we're gonna do this again. Back it off a quarter of a turn. That's just to make sure that the first time something didn't go a little bit haywire. Make sure that it cocks and fires and stays cocked. Now as far as sensitivity, it's a 564 Allen wrench. This screw right here Pretty simply, it, it applies pressure to a spring. If you turn it clockwise or in, the release will get heavier. If you turn it counterclockwise and out, it gets lighter. You can actually, on the GOAT release, remove this completely out and take the spring completely out if you want it as light as it'll possibly go because there is an internal spring that was built into this release so that it'll always have tension that it requires to reset the trigger in a consistent spot. A little trick for people that really like a heavy release, you can get rid of this spring and take a little piece of O-ring material and cut it about the same length of the spring and insert it in place of the spring and you'll be able to get the release really, really heavy. There is a point whereas if you turn the screw in too far it will no longer cock and fire. You've gone so far that you've compressed the spring to the point to where the release just isn't gonna work anymore. And so it will not get any heavier than that. If you get to that point, just back the, the screw out, maybe a turn until it will cock and fire, and that's as much as it'll get. Okay, so we're gonna start by, as you can see, it is a button or a trigger release. You cock it here, here's a little loop. When you apply pressure or to the trigger, it releases. Okay? So now, if you want to go to a hinge style release, the first thing that you want to do is you want to get a little screwdriver, a little Phillips head screwdriver, and on the side that there is only one screw, the anodized side, take this little screw out. Alright, we're going to take this out. And then I'm going to take my little 50 thousandths Allen wrench and from the other side, I'm going to push this, screw, this dowel pin out. Now the head is able to pivot just like a regular back tension release, any back tension release that you've ever seen. We've got a little built-in spot right here in the handle so that you can stick this dowel pin and you can put the screw in behind it so that you can store this dowel pin 
and screw for when you want to go back to a trigger. All right, now you're going to take this 564 Allen wrench and there's a sear lock right here and a trigger lock right here. You're going to turn these clockwise until they're tight, both of them. And you notice that the cocking bar went off when I tightened this because the trigger lock locks the trigger in place so that it can be used to pull as far as when you're pulling the bow back like a regular back tension. The sear lock locks the sear in the location. All right, so now the release is a back tension. This one has a clicker on it, okay? For the back tension release, there's a micro adjust screw so that you can make it faster or slower, just like any other back tension release. To adjust the micro adjust, you need to loosen this lock screw. Just half turn, quarter of a turn, and then you turn it clockwise for quicker, counterclockwise for slower. There is a lock screw on this micro adjust, just like you have on the travel and the sensitivity. It's right here. Again, you really don't want to monkey with that. You just want to make sure that you've always got tension on that. And then as you make your adjustments, either faster or slower, just always remember to relock your sear lock and it will be ready to go. The cocking bar in the hinge mode does nothing. It goes in and out. Don't worry if you hit that, drawing it back or anything like that, it's not gonna affect the shot at all. And I wanna point out too that the adjustment for the hinge here does not affect the adjustment that you made when it was in the trigger mode. And the adjustments that you make here and here as far as travel and sensitivity will not adjust the back tension mode. So they're totally independent of one another and what you do to one will not affect the other mode. So when we go back to the trigger mode, it will be set up exactly how you had it set up prior to changing it over to the hinge mode and vice versa. It comes with our standard medium click, like our HT, our HBC. Uh, there will be available a quicker click, and also you can flip this around and have no click. We'll go over how to adjust that, rotating it around in another video. Uh, right now we just want to go over how to go from trigger to hinge. All right. So now you want to go back to trigger. First thing you want to do is you want to loosen these, go all the way until they're tight. These lock screws are headed. You can't go too far. They won't fall out. They won't interfere with anything. Go until they're tight. That's what holds them in place. Now your trigger is, is, is working. Your cocking bar is working, but this head is still loose. So, you need to take your little screw out and your little dowel that we stored in there previously. And you're gonna line up this little hole right here with the handle. Now, if you don't loosen this up first, this may not go in because it might be to where the sear is interfering with it. And you might have to really, you know, if you're really having to push on this and don't ever use a hammer, it should go in by the hand. And if you've had this in your pocket and shot it as a hinge mode for a while, it's liable to have some goop on it and stuff. Blow it off with an air hose, blow it off with your mouth. There's nothing wrong with putting a little bit of uh, lightweight oil in here. It won't hurt a thing. But we're gonna line this up and it should go in fairly easy by your hand. And then you're gonna back it up with the screw again so that it holds it in. and it's back as a trigger. I hope you enjoy your new GOAT release, and if you take care of it, I'm confident that it'll give you years and years of high quality performance that you've gotten used to with the Trueball name, and I wanna thank you for being a member of the Trueball team.